see my screen and it says China on, on it. Um, our school had a project-based learning uh, experience on, on China. And so we made this presentation for the grade fours. And there you can clearly see that it is a beautiful picture. It's not just a normal, boring picture that shows the Great Wall of China. It is morphed and it is trans and it is embedded into a shape, which I will show you now. Uh, then the China on the world map. It is an, was an Afrikaans project and it transitioned into the, the earth, which is a very cool trick. Uh, then Another visual present, uh, representation that can happen is this, the wheel that spins. And then here we go into our presentation. And what is wonderful about this presentation, this type of presentation, it is visually appealing and it's not just uh, a normal next slide, next slide, next slide. It gives a beautiful transition from the one there we go from the one topic to the next where the wheel is spinning so you can see then there there's a lot of slides going on and i want to stop here at this slide and i'm going to start my presentation here Okay, here's the gamification part of it. Um, you can see I just copied and pasted the, the wheel and then I just added a text box that says get your game on. Um, for this purpose, I did it in English. <clears throat> All right, so the first gamification uh, uh, example that I want to show is something uh, that is actually supported by Microsoft. It is called Class Point. Um, it is a software that you download onto your computer and it, it, it links up with PowerPoint. And I do encourage you guys to take out your cell phones now. Uh, I'm going to start the multi multiple choice and you will see that there is, I will give you a QR code. You can scan the QR code. At the top you will see here is a, um, <clears throat> a class code. <clears throat> you can uh, enter the class code and then you can sub submit your answer. And what you will see is you will see exactly my screen on your phones. So I encourage you to quickly do that. There's the QR code. You can then have the, the, the kids um, collectively in groups discuss the, the, the question and it can be much more complicated than just what I did now uh, and submit the answer. And that way it makes it very, very interactive. You have a music button here at the bottom, which is very cool. Then there's a time limit. I can see how many people are participating. And then here I can see the responses. So five participants responded. Okay. And then when I close, thank you for participating. Let's go click on the live part. There we go. There's all the names of the participants. <coughs> There you can see, uh, keep your phones open, please. There you can see uh, who has participated, who has answered. So you can do it in groups, you can do it individually. And now I can say, okay, I'm going to restart the activity. Well, on this side, I can say award stars to all. Ta -da! And then on your screen, you will have, you've received a little, a little star, which is very cool. The kids um, love it. I can share this, I can insert it into a slide. So there's many, many uh, functionalities in the software. I think it's absolutely amazing. Right, so then once you have finished your, your uh, um, quiz or your slide, your game in the slide, it'll turn green. Then you can go to the next one. This one is particularly cool. Uh, for, for the English people, it says, what kind of food do we get in China? So again, I'm going to click on the, on the icon. The game is going to start. And then as you type the words in, and please feel free to type any kind of word. It's not just for China. Just type any cool word that you can find. Um,
So the first thing I want to show you that I really think is very cool is how to create a game using class point. Right. So I'm going to sort of insert a new slide over here. And then you'll see here at the top of my screen, it, it says ik new. I don't know how to pronounce it, but then it says class point. So what I, as I mentioned before, I downloaded the software and it's a whole uh, um, um, click next process. It's an automatic run process if you download the, the um, software and it is safe. As I mentioned, it is endorsed by Microsoft. So it is completely safe for your machine. So if you click on it, then it'll give you the options at the top here. So like any any product, there is options where you can only access when you have when you are subscribing. But then there's also a whole lot of cool options that is free for you to use. So <clears throat> this is again unbelievably friend, uh, user friendly. I can simply click on the uh, multi choice, for example, and just like a Google form or a Microsoft form, you just have to do a little bit of admin and say, okay, number of choices. I'm going to have five choices. Uh, which one is the correct answer is A. And then you can add here start activity with slide, minimize activity, or auto close the submission after so many questions. So uh, if it's really like a, a math test and you want to do a little bit of a speed test with, with the time symbols or so, you can select to close the slide on a certain um, um, certain time, give the kids a certain amount of time to do it, which also obviously creates a little bit of excitement within the class, especially when you pair them up uh, and it's maybe feedback from an outing they had. So uh, once you have done that, you can manipulate this icon. You can drag it bigger, you can drag it smaller, uh, you can drag it anyway on the screen that you, you see fit. Once you click on it, so when you are then in presenters mode, uh, like this, there you see it at the bottom of your screen. If I click on it, then it opens up the um, the responses. To get the QR code, you go at the top link here. You click there, and there's the kids. There the kids can um, uh, join with the QR code. Once you've done, then you just literally follow the prompts. So that was multi-choice. Uh, the word cloud that we did with the with the um, the food. You can even say how many responses the kids can enter. So if you only want them to be very specific when you do a language activity or a history activity and there's just a certain amount of questions, you can limit the kids. Uh, but I've set it to maximum and that makes it really fun. And you, you, as you see, you saw the, the words interact and they, they change as the, the comments come in or the, the answers come in. There we can see how many stars who get. Nikita was a, a overachiever today. Nikita, you get my, you get the naughty, naughty badge for five stars for these games. So, okay, so as I said, here is a fun way that I um, did <coughs> a quiz on uh, the slideshow. So this is not through class point. It's not through the to your cell phones. Uh, I'm going to click on start quiz. And if you have an interactive whiteboard, you can have, have the kids come up and click on the buttons or if you have, you can just turn your cell phone or your laptop and let the kids come answer. Uh, but we can answer and then you will see that each button has the right or wrong response. So if we say the continent is China, is Africa, then it says, nope, sorry, wrong answer, try again. And we can go, we can say North America, no, sorry, that's wrong. And we can say Asia and it's the correct answer. And if you saw, on the question if i click the wrong question wrong answer it doesn't go to the next slide it jumps back to the question uh, if i click on the correct answer then it gives me the option to go to the next question so if i click on the next question there you see it's question two what is the what if what what is one of china's official languages uh, again if i click on the wrong a button and it's the wrong answer it says it asks me to try again or and if i uh, click on the correct one it says next question right so to start a quiz is really really 
easy if you keep track of your slides. That is the most important thing. So what I would suggest is have your planning ready. You know exactly what questions you want to ask. You know exactly what it must look like. You have the right answers. Then you can just formulate um, the, the questions and the slides. Right. So you, how we do this is you insert a, a, a shape. There's my shape. And that's how I started. And then you just beautify it. You can add a color. You can add dimension to your to your shape. You can say start quiz on this one. Right. Then the next slide, <clears throat> you make it red. You say you you write at the top wrong answer and you add a text box that says retry. You can even add sound to it. I will show you now. Then you add you add another slide. It doesn't really matter where it is as long as you have it. You add another slide with a green background, correct answer, and a text box that says next. Then you can start with your questions. For every question, there's a, a, a slide. You add uh, your question and your text boxes to uh, um, and with the answers written on top. Okay. So here is where you, you uh, need to just keep track of what you're doing. How do I go? How do I jump to the first slide if I click on start quiz? Right click on the block and then you say you go to link. You click on link. You click on in this document and there uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will see all your slides. So that's not going to allow me now, but I can see how many slides there are. So slide number 26 is the start the quiz one. 27 is the wrong answer. 28 is the correct answer. And then you start your slide. So you want the kids to jump from start quiz to question number one. And if I then want to link it, I can go and say question number one was slide 29 and I can just click. So what is very, very nice uh, to help you keep track, the moment you click on a slide, it gives you what is on the slide so that you can have a visual uh, present representation and just remember what is what was on that slide. So even if you want to ask a question and you want to jump back to your content slides, you can even do that. But for the for the sake of this um, exercise, we're going to do the answers. So we've clicked on uh, start quiz. We want the kids to go to question one and there is question one and we click OK. And if you want to test it, you can go uh, preview and you click on the block and there it jumps to your first question. Right now in this your first question. You add how many blocks you want the kids to be able to answer. And then it's literally this simple. You follow the same process. Right click on the block. You go link. You say in this document, if it's not already selected, if it turns blue like that, you can, can just go and change the color. Change the color back to white. Uh, and it will not take away the link. So the link will stay the same. Um, sometimes it, do, it does uh, uh, make a line under, underneath it. And I have to say that's a little bit annoying. So just keep on trying. Uh, and if it happens, I found that if you delete the text box and just add it back again, the line will not always be there. Now for the fun part, how do we do this cool effect where where these images morph into each other and go smoothly from one image to the next right so i have made sorry my computer's a little bit slow i have made an extra powerpoint here with an, an, another uh, example, and I just uh, I I took the liberty of using Cape Town and gorgeous beaches. And every time there is a new uh, image, 
it corresponds with the text on the screen. Okay, so here's another example of a beautiful kind of, of uh, intro to a presentation. Now, I haven't added a text box. I just really want us to get to how do we do this in PowerPoint? All right, now, this seems daunting. It really does. But I assure you, a lot of what I'm going to show you now is repetition. Once you understand the process, once you understand what needs to happen, the others will follow. And once you get the first couple of steps right, at a certain point, you are going to have to just repeat yourself and then it is really simple. I'm going to show you how to create a slide that looks like this one or the next one like this. If you see it, kind of the same image, but the, the shapes are just completely different. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to just add a new slide. Okay. First of all, you insert, a, let's have a topic. I think let's, let's go a little bit, uh, and it's, there's no right or wrong in this step. You can uh, do either or. So let's, I would like to maybe go and add a picture on an ice cream. Don't know why I'm thinking about ice cream. Maybe my body is craving ice cream. Okay. So there's a beautiful, beautiful images of ice cream. Maybe you're talking about dairy or healthy living or unhealthy living. You insert the picture. Right, ice cream. Now, as we know, this is not uh, uh, this is not very exciting. Even down the side, where you can use the the suggestions of the designer, it's still a little bit boring. We want to spice this up. Okay. Now here's where it starts. You inserted your picture. The next step, click on insert, shape. Okay, so I am going to create an ice cream shape. So you insert a circle, uh, um, hold control shift and copy and drag and copy, drag and move. So then you'll see that you can create um, instead of saying copy and paste, copy and paste, it's a, it's a very useful shortcut if you want, if you have a lot of uh, shapes to manipulate. But for this can, this one, I'm just gonna need three. <clears throat> Oops, see there it copied my image because my image is highlighted. Let's just go and highlight the right image. All right, so there I have three circles. I'm going to position them in the shape of a kind of a ice cream. Okay, now I'm going to in, insert a triangle for my cone. And this seems like it takes long, but I assure you, once you get a hold of it, it is quick. And what I always say is you work hard for the first couple of presentations. And then once you have it, you can just literally um, save it for the next year. Okay, so what's nice is with this yellow button, you can manipulate the, the, side, the, the angle of your, your shape as well. But now, how do I get it to look like this? Right, you have the three shapes. Let's just move that one a little bit over. You have the three shapes. I want you to, to highlight all, select all, the shape so you hold shift in hold shift click on all the shapes you want click on shape format there is your best friend I, I wish i had a highlighter so that i can highlight that when you do presentations like this ladies and gentlemen where you want to use transitions where you want to do merge of an image this little icon is your best friend Click on Merge, and then you have all your options. I'm going to run through them slowly, then you can see what happens. Subtract is where 
you can see it subtracts from the bottom image. Intersect. Uh, nothing is happening because we, we're not done with the shapes. Fragments. You can even see the triangle. The tri it, you can see all the shapes. Combine. Uh, we are going to select Union. There is my ice cream. You can now drag it smaller and bigger. Right. Now, to have the ice cream image inside of our shape, you simply go and select the ice cream shape, the, the image shape, the image, hold shift, select the, the shape, go to shape format again, again, your best friend, merge shape, and you go to intersect. And there is your image inside of your shape. But now you think, oh goodness, this is not exactly what I want. This is easy to manipulate and to edit. You click on picture format, you click on crop, and there you can drag your image wherever you want and whatever you want centered on your screen. When you click on it or um, uh, preview it, that's what it co it's going to look like. So let's just quickly see how we're going to do uh, an image or a slide like this one. Okay, so I've inserted a, 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 a square shape and this yellow button again allows you to, man, to edit the, the edges. Again, when I want more of it, control shift and click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Right, oops, let's go one more. Okay, now we are not done. Now you can, you can edit and move these around, but I don't wanna move only one at a time. I want to move all five at once. Go and select all of them, shift and click. You can go shape format again, your best friend. You can say uh, combine. Now it's one image, it's one selection, image, shape. You can then turn it. However you want, let's do it the other way, maybe. Then you go and right click on it. Okay, can I correct myself here? Right click, click on group. Now I can turn it. Ungroup, click, right click, ungroup. Now the, the, the shapes are again uh, individual and I can go and move them where I want. Let's do it the other way. Okay, there's no image yet. We can go always and say picture, uh, online, and we can say uh, rugby, rugby fever all over the place. I'm not going to find a Springbok rugby. Okay, let's just go and choose any picture we insert it. Send to the back. Send to the back. Right. Let's see if it works now. Select the picture. Select the images, the slideshows. And there we go. We intersect. And there is your eagle be as part of the insects. Again, if you want to move the image around, you click on crop and you can move the image where you think it is the best represented. A very, very cool thing that I have, uh, to be honest, recently came across is 3D models. And if you've worked with 3D models, you will you will uh, know that it is unbelievably cool. So we're going to sort of do emojis just for the sake of time. Okay, so there's an emoji. And the very cool thing about 3D images, it can move and turn and you have a 3D version of this cool um, image, but you can do anything you want anything okay so i want to show you a quick transition uh, example so let's say for example 
you want this image to talk to look at a, 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 a speech bubble Here's the speech bubbles right so this one looks at this speech bubble and you can turn it so that it looks like it looks at it we are going to control shift copy the speech bubble control shift copy oh, this one we have to copy old-fashioned and we can put it all right so now what did I do in my first slide I added the image to where it I wanted to be on the first slide on the second slide I have cop I have moved it to where it should go very simple and you can do that with all the slides that follows then you go and select both slides or all of the slides you click on transition and here is the coolest feature of all morph okay let's see if this works I'm going to present and there it's morphed into a seemingly it looks like it is one slide instead of uh, two slides where it is just simply back and forth and um, boring shapes there this is the one i made for cape town this is actually very simple you can select you you uh let me just do it okay so obviously your circle looks like that uh, you go and select all your shapes and you group it so you right click on it once you've selected all the shapes you group it then this one is an animation and you click you can click on the drop down arrow and then you click on spin that simple if you want to change the time of the animation uh, the command you can click go up here to animation pane or you can click on the on the, uh, the this number this means that you have uh, added an animation click on the animation pane and then you have this this panel over here when you click on the drop down arrow you can see here that it says start on click start with previous of the previous that simply means when you are in presentation mode when does the animation start so if you say every time i click or i press uh, the arrow or the enter button the the animation starts or you can say it starts immediately after i go to the next slide so for the argument's sake we're going to keep it on click then you can go here on timing and then you have this little uh, window popping up and then you can say i want it to spin very slowly or very fast so if we can just there it spins really really fast uh, if you want to change it then you can just go and click on the drop down arrow and say very very slow that is really how you do it